but I thought it would be interesting to compare a fairly expensive knife and probably one of the most basic knives you could buy that's an Amtec MT151 which is a clone of the Cold Steel Trailmaster this is 440 stainless which is probably 440A and it's probably the most basic stainless steel that you can get in a large knife and it probably has the most basic heat treatment you can get because you can buy this knife for like 20 bucks so I thought it would be relatively interesting to look at these two knives and see could I see a difference in them cutting as I said an extremely abrasive material Now traditionally, roofing knives have very thin uh, disposable blades and this is after three cuts which is all that was necessary to completely obliterate the edge on this knife. So it has no real fine cutting ability but can sort of tear the paper. In terms of carving ability, in the same section, you can still work wood, but again, a knife has to be extremely blunt not to be able to do that, and you won't notice much of a difference in chopping ability, because again, that's a very coarse test of sharpness. But three cuts, the edge is gone on this high-end steel. And if I actually just run my thumb over it like this, I can actually feel the jagged pieces of steel uh, on the edge. And that's really not surprising because that's rock. Both of these knives have a near identical edge profile. Both of them have high convex bevels at the top or shoulder. The angle is around 7 to 8 degrees. At the very edge down here, it's around 12 degrees. That's normally the edge angle that's functional for me over a wide variety of woods in the summer and early fall. As it moves later towards the winter, I'll increase the primary bevel, not very much, but by a couple of degrees to allow me to work on frozen woods. Now again, I'll just make three cuts with this. Interestingly enough, and this is kind of what I figured would happen, but I wanted to check it to make sure, the edge on the Forester radically chipped out. You can't see it on the camera, but I look at, look at it close up, you can see the edge chipped out all along this bevel. On the MT-151, there's no chipping visible. It's obviously very worn, it's not very sharp uh, in that area, and I do not think it will cut paper well, but it doesn't have the visible chipping and I'll take a few pictures of that when I get inside yeah, and similarly it's ripping the paper more than anything and again fine cutting really isn't an issue no problem carving and again you can see how effortlessly this penetrates mainly because of the very thin bevel like if I wanted to there's no problem embedding that knife into the stump similarly. Again the primary bevels. Now I'm going to see work on another section of the blade. This is actually fairly difficult to cut because I'm trying to work closer to the tip. This stuff is massively difficult to cut. Now what I did that time, if you'll notice it was a lot easier, 
was because I switched to cutting the asphalt at an angle. First I was pushing it straight down into it, and I did it intentionally, because that's the hardest way you can cut anything. The material itself, when you're pushing straight down into it, tends to warp, tends to put a lot of strain on the edge. So I wanted to do a few cuts, worst case scenario, and then what I wanted to do was do some more sensible cuts, as if I was actually going to do it, how I would do it, and now I'll attempt the same thing with this. And you can see it's much easier. Still difficult. But not as hard. So that's 10 cuts with each one. And these little pieces, like I said, are actually very nice. Once you get a fire going, they will burn to our asphalt. There's a lot of rubber in them. And again, even with that more extended cutting, it's not gonna be enough to blunt the edge to the point where you can't carve wood. Now, what you'll notice is you won't get the really clean, like I can find a spot down here, this piece of the edge never really cut anything. And you can see you can get very fine curls relatively easily because the edge is very sharp. Just sort of rotating with your thumb like that. It's very difficult to do that where the edge is so blunt up here. It's still possible, but you'll notice it takes more force and you're getting a lot of breaking of the wood but still, can be done. Now, one more thing. With one last section of the blade, so if we look at it, we got some light cutting down here, three cuts straight down into it, ten cuts at an angle. Now I'm going to do some chops with the tip, a sort of worst, worst case scenario. And again, the reason that that's actually sparking is that that contains rock. Moderate amount. Another nice little pile of asphalt. And just looking at the blades fairly grossly, like comparing them by eye, right here there's no difference that I can see at this distance between the two blades. Both of them are obviously fairly worn. If I get up close, I can see what appears to be more chipping on this blade and I can see what appears to be more wear on this blade and that's sort of what I'd expect. This is a high carbide stainless steel. This is a relatively low carbide stainless steel so it'll tend to be a bit tougher. But in terms of general functionality at this point both of them are at about the same. Uh, they're going to have difficulty doing fine work. They're not essentially going to cut paper at all and they'll also have difficulty cutting light vegetation, cord, stuff like that but they're still easily very functional in terms of carving or chopping woods and again if I look at the top part which took the worst of it because I was actually chopping into it still has no problem moving through a piece of wood although I can feel even at this stage that it's a lot rougher I get more of a jolt when the blade goes into the wood. I don't get that normal smooth cutting action that I'm used to when chopping with a blade which has this edge profile. But I mean you could still work through the wood. 
The only thing that I'd keep in mind is if I was doing this, because the edges are so blunt now on both knives, when I'm chopping, I use a much shallower angle. Because with the edge blunt, it's more likely to glance. So normally I'm chopping down around 40, 45 degrees, come in like this. With the edge that blunt, it'd be more likely to glance. So I'll increase the angle, so it'll be probably around um, maybe 25 to 35 going into the wood. It'll be much closer to upright, which means there's less, glance, less chance of glancing. It doesn't make it as effective when you're chopping, you're having to do more work. But with the edge this blunt, yeah, and I can really feel this is really rough. There's a lot of little jagged parts in it. And this doesn't feel the same. It's more smoother. Uh, so the next interesting part will be now, how do they respond to sharpening? How long does it take to get the damage out on either one to repair uh, this, which, as I said, is probably some of the hardest cutting a knife would ever be asked to do uh, outside of actual digging uh, itself.